Well, hey guys, Kenneth Bacor here, EV Revolution Show, episode 61, my review of the 2019 Hyundai Kona Electric, or Kona EV, depending on what part of the world you're in. As you can see, I've got a beautiful white one. I want to thank Hyundai Canada for allowing me the use of a uh, test vehicle for a week. Again, up front, disclaimer, was paid no money, have no sponsorship or endorsements from Hyundai. They just grac graciously allowed me the use of a press vehicle for a week, so I thank them very much. Um, as you can see, I've, it's a lovely color. I, mean, I just got it washed, but we've had a lot of rain around here, so it's still slightly dirty. Uh, a very, very nice car. Let me give you a recap of what we have here. Now, in Canada, there's two models. There's a preferred and an ultimate. In your country, the models will vary. The preferred starts at just under 45000 so it can make the federal incentive grant, and the ultimate at just under 52000 which also qualifies for the $5,000 incentive because the base model does. Um, so what that gets you? Well, uh, EPA rated at 415 kilometers, but to be honest, folks, when I got this car, it was at 90% and it was sh uh, showing 450 kilometers. So you can do the math to miles and uh, miles for range, but that's phenomenal. And in my uh, almost week of driving around, I did about five days of driving. I just went to charge it today, and you'll see that coming up here when I uh, to take you over to the Milton Petro Canada Ultra Fast Charger for a test. But in that time, I drove about 350 kilometers and. And I still had about uh, 95 kilometers left and I was only at about 25% battery. So this thing has range, range, range. That's what I have to say about that. And it's very efficient as everybody says it is. It was showing me a 12.1 um, uh, kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, if I've got those numbers correct. Efficiency, uh, my Leaf gets about 14 point something, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. So as you can see, it's much more efficient than my Leaf. And uh, the first that's the first thing that caught my mind was the range. If I didn't need to go test it to uh, the Milton Charger today, I most likely would not have gone to it and I would have just not had to charge it for the week that I've had it. Quickly go through some standard features. Everything's on the internet, but the main important points, it's got a 150 kilowatt uh, uh, electric motor that puts out 201 horsepower, 290 pound-feet of torque, which you can really hear from the all-important 64 kilowatt uh, battery. 415 kilometer EPA range, as I mentioned, but reality is you're getting much more. And I think if you look at a lot of video reviews for people that actually own them, uh, that are starting to drive them around, you will see a similar story that range is higher than what EPA gives you. Uh, these have 17 inch aluminum wheels, so they are, in my opinion, a little bit noisier than I think we can get for some of the other tires. So that's one comment you'll hear me talk about earlier on, or later on. It does have a heat pump system here in Canada, so I'm not sure about rest of the world, but in Canada, that is very important to save energy. And of course, a liquid battery management system for the all important thermal management. A couple other standard features that come with the vehicle, of course, our six speaker stereo system with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as integrated for both. Lots of safety features available on the uh, Kona. Uh, the ones that, uh, now this is again the ultimate version, so this is the 52,000 uh, before any taxes and fees and discounts and all that stuff version, because it has the sunroof, the moonroof, uh, nicer interior, but it also adds parking distant, distance warning front and reverse. So that gives you your audible parking sensors. So it kind of beep, 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 beep as you get closer to something. And there's also color graphs that show up on a screen. Now, as far as a camera, the Kona only has one camera. It's a forward facing camera for your adaptive cruise control needs. Um, so it has that, but it also has a rear a reversing camera around the license plate. So sorry, it has two cameras, I guess. It doesn't have a front camera as far as parking or any side cameras like the Nissan Leaf does where you can get it into the 360 as they call it vision but you get those audible sensors again that are all around the car and it also has high beam assist which means that when you put the high beams on and somebody's coming to you it automatically shift down to the low beams again it uses that front camera to, to look for that and will make those adjustments other things you get on the Ultimate are LED headlights. They're bifunctional with active cornering lights. And uh, as, you know, the cornering lights are pretty cool because when I was driving at night, and I've talked about this in the drive along a little bit, coming up a little bit later, um, it really helped. It's kind of, you know, when you make that turn, those lights come on. So that was pretty cool. And of course, I mentioned the power sunroof, moonroof, whatever you want to call it. I love, I love sunroof, moonroofs. This is very nice. I, I usually drive with it open most of the time. Uh, so it's a really nice feature to be able to have into an EV. 
And the higher end trim also adds a bunch more other features. It upgrades the display to an 8 inch touchscreen with a Sirius XM and uh, some HD radio stuff. Uh, it upgrades it to the Infinity Audio Sound System. I have to admit, folks, I had this cranked a couple times and it is a nice sound system. It will blow your ears out. Uh, it's got integrated navigation system with traffic flow and incident data, uh, free and HD radio. It's got wireless device charging, which is nice, similar to the Kia N uh, Nero EV that you saw. Uh, or the e-Nero, depending on what country you're in. Uh, you plop the phone in and it charges, pretty cool. Rain sensing wipers, I've talked about that. I'll talk about that in the drive through The eight inch, uh, eight inch heads up display, which I'll talk about coming up. Ventilated front seats are nice, both he heated seats and cooled. Uh, cooled seats, and that's nice. I used it once on a day. Uh, we've been cooling off now in the fall time frame, but I did try it once and it worked very well. This has a leather seating surface on the ult Ultimate model with eight-way power adjustable driver's seat, including two-way power lumbar for some back support. Front pass passengers, auto up and down window with pinch protection, as they call it. Also has passenger auto up. I don't know if it has pinch protection because I didn't want to stick my fingers in to try it, but it does have the uh, uh, front, uh, both drivers and passengers that do that and electrochromatic auto dimming rear view mirror with home link and all those magical buttons program your garage remote control and all that other stuff so that's kind of the difference in the models now let me take you through a drive along and give you some impressions of uh, a couple of days that i've spent with this vehicle Alright folks, so I'm here driving the Hyundai Kona EV. I spent uh, about five days with it, so let me give you some of my feedback on it. Uh, I'm not going to go through every feature or every nook and cranny of the vehicle because there's lots of videos that are out there that are exploring that, but I will give you some highlights. And again, I try to do this as an impression. A um, couple things, you got to remember this is a compact SUV, so it's a very small form factor. In fact, it's shorter in overall length than the Nissan LEAF. Uh, it's about three inches shorter in a wheelbase than a Nissan LEAF as well, but it is a couple of inches higher than the Nissan LEAF. So that gives you a little taller statue uh, and a little, um, uh, again, a little shorter, a little snubbier, if I use that word, um, uh, kind of phys physicality to the vehicle. Um, so which that makes it, to me, from a ride quality, um, it's a little... How should I say? It's a little go-kartish, and all I mean by that is because of the shorter wheelbase, it will tend to feel the bumps a little bit more and kind of hop a little bit. It doesn't lose road control. I don't mean that. It just means that the shorter wheelbase, you'll hop and bounce a bit. Now, this is a small compact SUV, as I mentioned, that has a stiffer suspension, bigger tires uh, than the Leaf and some of the other uh, uh, EVs that are out there. And so it gives you a little bit more stiffer ride. It does handle the road very well. I've I'm driving today on some twisty country roads uh, around my area. And the overall uh, feedback on this vehicle is very, very positive from that. Um, it's a fairly quiet car. But as I said in my Kia Nero EV a video, I did feel that the Nero was louder than I thought it was uh, going to be. Certainly it's louder than the Leaf. And this is about the same. Not that much of a surprise since Kia and Hyundai are basically the same company. They share a lot of components. They're built in the same factories in South Korea and so forth. So I fully expect that um, a lot of there'll be a lot of similarities between both the uh, Kia uh, Nero EV or E Nero between the Hyundai Kona EV and the Kia the new Kia Soul EV as well. There there are going to be a lot of similarities. Some of the other features I want to talk about that I, I thought were pretty cool on this vehicle that are different. Um, so it does have a heads-up display that you can turn on and off. Um, but I have to say the, head, the heads-up display on this works really well. Um, one feature that I do like about it is that when you turn it on, you engage it. It does have blind spot warning uh, so that, of course, you get the lights in the side mirrors. But it also shows that up on the HUD. So if you have a car beside you, it actually lights that up uh, either on both sides at the same time or one side or the other because it has the sensors all the way around. That's a cool feature because I could be driving 
and looking at the HUD and I can see that somebody's in my blind spot because I see during the day that sometimes it's hard to see these lights in your mirrors because they're so far away they're just on the edge of you know, your peripheral and you're kind of focused on the road and they don't tend to light up that bright especially in sunny conditions but having it show up on the HUD I thought was a really cool feature it doesn't show up on the binnacle just only on the HUD when those side lights so I thought that that was something unique that I have not seen before uh, on any vehicle so that was pretty cool uh, the overall dash layout is really easy to get used to it's very similar controls and the menuing system is the same basically as the Kia Nero no surprise because it looks like the same software that they run across the board between the two companies so uh, everything's logical everything's easy to find I didn't have any problems in trying to find data all that kind of stuff set the nav uh, program radio uh, controls operate the climate any of the normal stuff very very easy to use so I won't go a lot won't really get into the menuing system one thing I did like that I did discover on the uh, Kia Nero EV was the fact that I can change the turn signal uh, numbers from three to five to seven. If you just uh, press the turn signal down halfway, not all the way when you're making a lane change, I like to have it more than less. Uh, the normal is three, and I highlighted that on when I did the Kia Nero uh, review as well. Um, one thing I did notice, I'm not driving at night, but when I was driving at night last night, um, when you, it's got great LED headlights. Um, it kind of, you know, because the lights are lower, uh, you've got your daytime running lights and your headlights are actually below those uh, by a good margin. I wasn't sure how the headlight system would work. It works very well. It lights up the road quite well. Um, and also when you, it, this uh, vehicle, because it's the top of the line, has the uh, turn signal um, lighting uh, element. I forget what they call it. So it means is when, you, when you're turning right at night, uh, your headlights are on, and you're getting close to making that turn, let's say right or left, it will activate a side light or, or a light on the front side of the car that will shine on that, that spot. So like shine on the curb um, that you're turning right into or, or left. That was a great idea and it worked very, very well. So uh, good on uh, Hyundai for doing that. Um, the ACC display, well, another cool thing for uh, adaptive cruise control. I've been, I've been playing with the adaptive cruise control and their version of ProPilot. Uh, which is our lane keeping assist plus adaptive cruise control combined. The, the lane keeping is works very well, no ping ponging as well. It's very, very stable. The lane spacing works. Uh, you also get to see this the, on the spacing. So when you set your one, two, three, or four bar spacings, four car length spacings, uh, when a vehicle is in those spacing, it actually shows you. And as a vehicle moves further out, it will, it will show you on the display here on the binnacle, uh, if you have it set to show the, that the car is actually moving out of those spaces. And it actually puts that view into the HUD as well. So another thing that you can see on your heads up display. So I thought that that was pretty cool. I just, I like the way that Hyundai's finessed that system. Okay, another cool feature uh, that I haven't seen is this, uh, something called auto regenerative braking uh, or auto regeneration as they show in the dash. The Kona EV comes with four regeneration levels. Zero, which is pretty, pretty minimal one, two, and three. Three being the strongest, one being the weakest, but you do feel it. What I've had, I've left it on two, and I've also turned on auto regeneration. What that does is something unique. When I'm slowing down in traffic and, and um, letting my foot off the accelerator uh, and encompassing the regen, the radar will sense the vehicles in front of me. Then it actually applies more regen automatically. So it's like you stepping on the brake pedal gradually as you're slowing down. But in this case, the, the vehicle is doing it automatically using regen. So it actually bumps it up to level three as you, you know, uh, nice gradually slows you down and then bumps it down to level two for you or level one, wherever you have it set. So you can actually get to a nice smooth stop. And then basically you just have to press the brake pedal for the last 20 feet or so. Another thing that they have here is something like the e-pedal, which is called auto hold. I had to look at the button because it's down in the middle here. And what auto hold does is it, when you get to a stop, when you've stopped manually using uh, your, your, the brake pedal, you can take your foot off the brake and it will hold you at a stop. Um, it'll do that on a hill incline. Now I haven't gone to any hills more than about 8%, so I don't know what the limits of that hold are, but I suspect they're probably in the 10 to 15% range, which would be normal. Uh, and the other cool feature that Hyundai picked up on that I've noticed is it activates the rear brake lights. So that's cool. So you take your foot off the brake, auto hold keeps you at a stop, but the brake lights stay on. I like that feature. When you're slowing down using regenerating, if it's enough regenerating force that the rear brake lights come on as well. And that's a, that's something that I really liked about the Nissan Leaf, you know, with their 0.2G of deceleration, they'll activate the brake lights. But I really like that feature. I'm big on safety, folks. Anything, you know, 
better turn signals, better brake lights, better warning systems. It's all about keeping people safe. So a nice little feature, the auto hold. The auto hold that you have to turn on and off each time you start the car. Um, one other cool feature that I thought was a differentiator. Uh, now, this does not have forward looking cameras or side cameras. It just has a rear camera. So it's not like Nissan or some of the others that have 360 cameras and Tesla has their eight cameras or whatever. Uh, this just has a single rear uh, camera for reversing. But what it does have is parking assist or all those sensors around there. So it does give you audible for parking and it gives you an in binnacle display uh, when you're you know, green, yellow, red, when you're getting closer to an object. It will not only audible tell you, but it will visually tell you um, that as well uh, for parking forward and for coming uh, close uh, to the side of something. Um, then of course, uh, same, similar to when you're backing up, into a parking spot, it will give you the audible on the dash, and then also you get the backup camera to see those those uh, those markings. It also has cross rear backup uh, crossing, as they call it, uh, cross traffic alert. Uh, so if you're backing up and somebody's coming, it will give you an audible alarm and, and flash on the screen, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but one thing I noticed is when I put it into backup mode, and I'll play this little clip, and you'll you'll see what uh, what happens. Let me play this clip for you. It's only 11 degrees. <laughs> News Traffic Center. I'm Lena Baloka. Heavy volume on the eastbound 401 in the west end, but particularly slow eastbound 409 from the 427 to the 401 ramps. That's really backing up. Westbound 401 slow through Fort Union and the collectors to west through. We had an accident in the left lane for quite a while through there. And then anywhere from Meadowville off and on all the way through to the west. So as you can see in that clip, I had the radio running, and as soon as I put it in reverse, it put the volume down on the radio. Activated the rear screen because I put it in reverse. And putting the volume down on the radio, I thought was a really cool feature. And you're saying, Ken, why? What's what's cool about that? Well, you kind of want to have your attention when you're backing up, right? You want to know what's going on around you. So many times people are backing up out of parking spots and even with rear, rear cross traffic alerts or some of these features, you got your radio on, you may not hear the beeping going on. So I really thought that that was a nice little nuance that the system turns down the volume of the radio to a low level so that you could hear if somebody honks their horn or your, your alarms go off or something because sometimes the radios are loud and people just kind of zone out of, of things. And I thought that that was a really cool safety feature. Another cool feature, the auto wipers. A lot of systems that have auto wipers. I actually used it the other day, went through uh, varying amounts of rain in a storm. It went from light to heavy to light. Put it on auto and the wipers actually did a good job of sensing how much rain. As they got into heavier rain, they went faster on their own. As they got into slower rain, less rain, they went slower on their own. When I got into very light elements, they were, they were like intermittent. So I thought that they worked very well. So final kind of thoughts of driving the, the Kona EV after a few uh, days. I'm into my fifth day now. Uh, I've got a couple more days to, uh, I have to return it. Um, ergonomics is good. I mean, again, this isn't a huge vehicle, as I mentioned, hence why the Kia Nero in my pick was the pick of the year because it just had that much more room. I think it can uh, cater to a much more wider audience for what it has. Um, but this, uh, this drives really, really nice. It took me about a day or so to get used to it. Uh, ergonomically, for me, I'm getting used to it now, but like I said, it did take me a bit of time. I'm a driver that likes to put my arm on this and hold the steering wheel. Um, I find that the windows are a little narrow, they're a little compressed, um, and measuring the, the bottom, the top of the door before the, the window starts to the leaf, uh, this is about an inch and a half to two inches higher than the leaf is. So I'm used to kind of having my elbow rest on the door and usually having it a little lower. This is a little higher, so for, it's a tad awkward, but I'm getting used to it. I guess I'm getting acclimatized to it. So I'm, I'm a bit more of a relaxed driver that way. I can still keep two hands on the wheel, but I do put my arm on here. So I find that ergonomically for me, it's a little, a little more uncomfortable than I would like it to be. Seating position, because it has the, the multi-way power seats, I was able to find a comfortable seating position, no problem. So it just takes a little while to find it. I do wish again on a premium vehicle, this is $52,000 Canadian, that it would have at least one memory save or two memory saves for the driver's seat. It does not that I could find. I wish it would because usually you're changing drivers anyway in a lot of your cars. So that would be nice to be able to save the memory position other than trying to find it again. Um, as far as visibility goes, it's got really good visibility, other, other than I wish the windows were a little bit bigger, uh, but you know, nice big side mirrors, a, a really good size rear mirror, I think it works fine. The auto dimming is excellent, it's got a compass in the mirror. So this is the nicely equipped top of the line package with the sunroof, the power sunroof is great, I love to have sunroofs uh, as much as possible to let some air in and let some sunlight in. 
Uh, it works great. Overall, a great performance. Again, not huge in the back seat, not huge in the boot space, but certainly adequate enough for most families. Hey folks, just here at the, at the Milton Charger for our usual uh, test of fast charging. Um, you can see I've uh, got this car. I got this car about 450 kilometers and uh, I've driven 360 with still about a 93 more to go. Uh, I'll talk about range later on, but I'm gonna plug it into the 200 kilowatt CCS charger and uh, see what it pulls. Hey guys, just wrapping up at the Milton Charging Station, which is my test bed, as you guys know. I'm gonna stop it now. We had a failure in the testing, and that's what happens with these machines as Petro Canada is still trying to work out the bugs. Every once in a while, it just stops charging, and you have to disconnect it, reinitialize re the charge. So that took us about five minutes to get it going. So in reality, uh, I've charged probably about, uh, almost about 25 minutes. Got, went from 20% to 62%. Um, and as you saw in the pictures here, I, I reached a maximum of about 76, 77 kilowatt pull. For some reason, initially, it wasn't pulling very strongly. After this, uh, the failure and we restarted it, it went right up to the 75 mark, which is where I expected it to be for the Kona EV, because uh, it does have a faster uh, onboard charger for DC fast charging. So I'm going to stop it now, and uh, at least that's information that you can see. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed my impression review of this lovely 2019 Hyundai Kona Electric. Uh, it's a great vehicle. My summary on this is definitely, definitely a buy. I think the main thing that blew me away with this was the range. Uh, it's just got phenomenal range for the car. Not huge in the space. As you saw uh, in my some of the B-roll that I ran, I got into the vehicle in the back seat. It's very cramped for me where I have the seat position. Um, you know, on a short trip, I could be manageable, but if it was a long trip, it would be a comfortable. So take that into consideration. And as you folks know, I always talk about ergonomics and making sure you try to try the vehicle. Take your, your yourself, take your significant other, your kids, whatever it is, go in there and try the vehicle physically. If you can't take it for a test drive, at least go sit in one, try to get comfortable and see if that works, especially for cargo space and all around roominess. So it's these kind of things you have to look for. It does have telescopic tearing, a steering wheel, excuse me, as well as tilt. So I was able to really find a good driving position and get comfortable on it. Uh, but overall, a great vehicle. So ergonomically, you need to make that decision. But as far as the mechanics go on this, just excellent, excellent battery range. It's got all the basic necessities you need to monitor that. This is a car you're just gonna charge, get in and forget about it. And then when you get down to 15 or 10%, then then charge it up again. That's the kind of experience I had with this uh, vehicle this week. And that's exactly what I expected to be honest because they share the same power tr plant, drivetrain and battery technology in the Kia Nero EV and the Hyundai uh, Kona, this one, and also the Kia Soul, the new Soul that's coming, that's uh, out now, which I will have very shortly on another review. So that's the positives of this vehicle, a great vehicle. I guess the only negatives I would say, heard that pedestrian warning sound, it's kind of loud to me, but. <laughs> You know, I tell you, I've driven by some people and they haven't even noticed that I was driving by until I'm beside them. So, uh, you know, maybe people aren't hearing that sound. Uh, but as a negative, I mean, a little bit of ergonomics would be my only complaint on this. It is a small package, so you need to take that into consideration. But for what you get, you get a lot. And at a price point here where you can get into it for $52,000, unless you're, you know, plus your taxes and unless you're $5,000 federal rebate, you get a lot of car for that money. And the main thing is you get a lot of range. This is by far one of the top range vehicles that's out there. Uh, the only thing that would beat this, in my opinion, right now would be the Tesla Long Range Model 3 and the, and the Model S's, of course. But they are, you know, a heck of a lot more price as well than this baby is. So um, I think that this is a great vehicle, certainly a thumbs up, in my opinion. And I congratulate Hyundai for building such a wonderful vehicle that's going to really fit the need for a lot of folks. So that's really all I have to say, folks, about the Hyundai Kona Electric. Great vehicle. Go buy one if you're thinking of it. This really hits a sweet spot. So again, thank you very much, Hyundai Canada, for loaning me this test vehicle. Very much appreciated. Appreciate it. And I'm glad that I could uh, take you on this journey. If you have any questions or comments, of course, I love YouTube comments because that's it. That's the end of this episode. Please don't uh, forget to put likes on there. Send me YouTube comments. My contact information is coming up at the end of the show.
So please send me an email. If you have a Kona, I know a lot of you do. I've met a few folks here locally that have them. Tell me what your experiences are on that. And as always, I'm very humbled by my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for donating and continuing to support me through Patreon. You can check out the website if you're interested. Even a dollar a month will help me to continue to produce the episodes and the shows that I do. Uh, if you also want to send me uh, something, a donation via PayPal, just send me an email uh, and you can do that. And I'll send you the details on how to do that. I've been asked a couple of time so i wanted to throw that out there uh don't forget fully charged live coming up in february 1st and 2nd of 2020 i had to think about that for a sec i definitely will be there now and uh you can go buy your tickets you can get a 15 percent discount using uh code ev revolution it is case sensitive so please look at the, what's on the screen here and type it in exactly to save yourself 15 percent as always everybody thank you very much for watching and until the next show please stay safe and i'll see you next time bye bye